Sarah, and I get questions all the time about what is a walking foot? Why do I even need one? And why are there so many different types of walking feet out there? We have for baby lock, a walking foot, a deluxe walking foot, and even a digital dual feed. And in this video, I wanna take you through the basics of a walking foot, what it does for you, when you would use it, and we're going to talk about the differences between, like I said, the walking foot, the deluxe walking foot, and the digital dual feed. start by talking about just a basic walking foot and this is it right here and the way that the walking foot works is when you're stitching you've always got feed dogs on the underside of your fabric kind of pulling the fabric from front to back from the underside and when you add in a walking foot it's like giving yourself a set of feed dogs along the top side of your fabric there's this little arm that sticks out and this gets attached right to the needle bar of the machine so with every single stitch as your needle bar travels up and down so does that arm and that causes the secondary set of feed dogs on the inside to also move up and down. It attaches here with this bracket right to the ankle of the machine and you can stitch on any sorts of fabrics with the walking foot. And it's especially helpful if you're using fabrics that slide or shift as you stitch. Now this is designed for a simple straight stitch, but if you'd like to utilize a walking foot and a decorative stitch, that's where you might think about using the deluxe walking foot. When you're working with the deluxe walking foot, it operates quite similarly to the standard walking foot, except that you have the ability to utilize decorative stitches. And that works because you still have this little arm that attaches to the needle bar, but instead of being straight out toward the needle, it kind of curves to the left a little bit. And that gives the needle bar the ability to move side to side within the attachment. And that's what happens when you work with a decorative stitch. Your needle moves side to side to create the stitch and it's moved by the needle bar. So this little attachment that sticks on to the needle bar allows that movement side to side. And then as it's moving up and down, you still have that extra set of feed dogs here moving up and down in coordination with the bottom set of feed dogs. One other huge benefit of the deluxe walking foot versus the standard walking foot is also the width of it. If we compare the two feet side by side, you'll see that the sole of the deluxe walking foot is quite a bit wider than the standard, and that gives it the ability to make more points of contact with the feed dogs on the underside of your fabric, which is necessary for those directional stitches. So you've got a nice wide sole, so you've got perfect feeding of decorative stitches through the machine. So with the deluxe walking foot, you do also get the quilting bars. Now if I loosen the screw back here, I can slide that guide bar right out and then insert the left side guide bar onto the other side. So you have the ability to create parallel and perfectly spaced rows of stitching just by utilizing the two different quilt guide bars that come with the walking foot. Now you do also get with the deluxe walking foot kit a screwdriver and that's because we can unscrew the sole of the deluxe walking foot and exchange it with an open toe sole that comes in the kit and what's nice about this is it is interchangeable and on this open toe sole you can see the needle so when you're working with the open toe sole on your deluxe walking foot you have a perfect view of your stitching even more advanced than the deluxe walking foot is the digital dual feed. And this is available to a lot of the machines in the Baby Lock lineup. And what's special about this, it is the most precise and accurate way of feeding fabric because instead of being a mechanical system that's controlled by the movement of the needle bar, it actually plugs right into the back of the machine and it's electronic. So you have the ability to make it work with the feed dogs electronically and it's belt driven. So you have a belt that literally glides along the top of your fabric pulling it from front to back, and you can make adjustments to that. So if you need to speed it up or slow it down, because it's electronic, we can do that. Now, the digital dual feed comes with one sole, this one right here, and it's a snap-on, just like all of our baby lock feet. But there are several other attachments that are available for the digital dual feed. We've got quilt guide bars, both left and right, which are great to work with. And then you also have the ability to utilize an open toe sole, a stitch in the ditch sole, a yarn couching sole, which is a lot of fun to play with, and even a quarter inch piecing sole. So you really can get the most accurate piecing and feeding of your fabric for any type of sewing. So now that I've walked you through the differences between our three different variations of walking feet, let me show them to you in action. Mm -hmm. 
I've taken the ankle off my machine and I'm ready to attach the walking foot. But I want to talk a little bit about fabric first. A common or traditional use for the walking foot is a quilt sandwich, but you'll find that it's also helpful if you're working with fabrics that tend to shift or stretch as you stitch, especially something with a nap. So if you're working with a velveteen or a minky fabric, anything that wants to slide around as you sew, you'll find that that walking foot's really helpful. It's not just designed for quilting. So to attach it, Again, you have to completely take the ankle off of the machine. And when we place this on, we want to make sure that we bring it in from the back and get the little arm onto the needle bar. And then the screw is going to be sitting right inside of the bracket here. So again, I think it's easiest just to kind of bring it in from the back. And I put the arm on the needle bar first, slide it right in, and I've got it attached to the screw. And at this point, I just need to tighten that screw to hold it all into place. Most of our baby lock machines come with several different types of screwdrivers, so you can kind of pick and choose which you find is the easiest to get in there. I like this black handled one personally. Give it a nice tight attachment, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's not shifting on us, and the walking foot is attached. So I've selected a center straight stitch, and you're going to place the fabric between the bottom of your walking foot and the feed dogs, of course. Lower the foot, and we're ready to stitch. Here I've got a really nice row of stitching. Everything's perfectly flat and even. And this time I'm gonna sew across it perpendicularly. Again, we've got a perfectly flat intersection. And this is important to point out when you're working with a walking foot because oftentimes, if this were me quilting a quilt by stitching in the ditch, a lot of times when I would bisect my seam, I might get a little pucker there where the fabrics just kind of ripple or shift. So when you're working with the walking foot, it keeps everything perfectly flat and you don't have any puckers whatsoever in your seams on the front or the back. It just gives you an absolutely perfect stitch. The reason that this works so beautifully is because you have a feed dog on the bottom, you've got a feed dog on top, and they're both grasping the fabric and pulling it back at the same rate of speed. With every single stitch, they're grasping that fabric and pulling it back, so you never have the shifting or the buckling of your fabric. Now this particular foot is designed to be used with a more narrow stitch, so here we've used a straight stitch. You would not want to use a decorative stitch that has any sort of reverse motion, because with that walking foot, you're only sewing forward, we can't do any reverse motion. But we can work a little bit with the zigzag. If you're working with a zigzag stitch, you want to keep it pretty narrow. 3.5 millimeter works great, but if you're working with a wider zigzag, if you take it out to the 7 millimeter width, you're going to find that as the needle bar moves side to side with each swing of the stitch, it actually ends up hitting the arm that grasps the needle bar and it gives you a bad stitch. So you want to make sure that you're working with the walking foot with a more narrow stitch or a straight stitch. And if you're interested in using this with a wider stitch or a decorative stitch, that's where we talk about utilizing the deluxe walking foot. There's also an optional quilting guide for the walking foot, and it's really easy to use. You literally just slide it into the hole in the very back of the walking foot, and then you can position it anywhere that you like from side to side so that you can have perfectly straight, evenly spaced rows of stitching. So I've got my first row of stitching here. I'm just going to angle that guide bar right down into my first row of stitching. And now when I stitch, I'll follow the same line and I'll have two parallel rows. And you can also insert the guide bar from the opposite side and stitch in the opposite direction. So there's a lot of versatility to the walking foot. You can see that it's an excellent addition to your sewing room. But if you really want to experiment with utilizing decorative stitches, it's time to take a look at the deluxe walking foot. I've attached the deluxe walking foot and it attaches in the exact same way. We've got the arm that sits onto the needle bar and then the bracket that hugs the screw and really easy to work with. And once again, I've selected a straight stitch and let's just see how this stitches. Lower my foot. So 
So once again, we've got that top set of feed dogs just walking along the top edge of the fabric, moving it from front to back. We'll sew across that line now. And here again, we've got perfectly flat stitching where our seams intersect, no buckling or puckering of the fabric. I mentioned before how with the standard walking foot, we didn't really want to work with a wide zigzag stitch, but it works really well with this deluxe walking foot. Let me show you that. So I'll select a standard zigzag stitch, and I'm going to make it as wide as it can go. There we are. And now we can stitch again. And the stitch is kind of the perfect example because you can really see how because of the fact that that little arm curves out, when the machine comes over for its furthest right swing in that zigzag stitch, we don't have to worry about the side or the needle bar there hitting the arm that attaches the walking foot to the machine. So with that deluxe walking foot, you really can feel free to play with some of those wider zigzag stitches. You still don't want to work with a stitch that has a lot of forward and backwards motion. We don't wanna go in reverse with the walking foot, only forward, but you can use those wider stitches. A really fun way to quilt a quilt is by actually stitching an applique shape through all three layers of your quilt sandwich. It gives you a really cool effect on the back. And it's really easy to do when you utilize the deluxe walking foot and the open toe sole that comes with it. So let me show you how we can attach that open toe sole. First, I need to remove it from the machine. And of course, I'm gonna use my screwdriver to loosen that screw just to take the deluxe walking foot right off. And you don't wanna take the screw all the way out, just loosen it up enough that you can kind of angle that foot, push down on it a little bit, and get it right off of the screw. So the first step to taking the sole off is to loosen up the screw. And the foot comes with the perfect size screwdriver. You're just gonna loosen that. It says three to five turns in the instructions. And this entire portion of the arm kind of swings out to the side when you loosen that up. Now, there's not really a good way to make this look super smooth, but you're just gonna kind of pinch the sole to get it out and then you're going to replace it with the open toe sole. Now it plugs in to both of these brackets. There are two little metal pieces that stick into these two holes and one on this side. And um, again, not uh, a super easy way to make it look really smooth, but you just wanna kinda line up those holes with the plugs in the foot. And I just kinda wiggled the arm just like that. And once you've got it into place, it really snaps nicely into place. And it's nice and loose right here, that screw. I can see where I've loosened it up to be able to change the foot. Now I just need to tighten that screw again and you can actually see it close. Until it stops turning. Of course, you don't wanna to go too tight because you've gotta be able to change it again. There we have it. So we've changed the sole to the open toe sole on the deluxe walking foot. And now I can just attach it to the machine again. And once again, I think it's easiest if you just kinda of come in from the back line up the arm on the needle bar. Here we go. Get the little bracket over top of the screw and then tighten the screw. Just gonna kind of angle the walking foot out of the way so I can really get to that screw. Get it nice and snug. There we go. Now we're ready to stitch. So I'm going to do a little applique, stitching this little applique bird onto my fabric, and for that, I'm going to select one of the applique stitches on the machine. Now we can see all of the different stitches up top when we open up the lid. So I'll select this key here, and then 39. And I know from the picture on the machine lid that the spine of this particular blanket stitch is on the left side, and I want it on the right side based on how I've got my bird oriented, so I'm gonna mirror that stitch. Thank you. 
and there we have our cute little applique bird. I've got one thread to trim out of the way there, but because of the open toe foot, I could very easily see where the edges of my bird were at and make sure the spine of my blanket stitch landed right along the cut edge of my bird. So from here, it'd be really easy to add some chain quilting or some straight line quilting to my little bird. And it's really, really easy with this walking foot because you do get those two quilting bars that come with the foot set. So to put those on, we do need to take the walking foot back off. There we go. And you get this little bracket with a screw that comes with this deluxe walking foot. And it sits in the back just like this. So there's a little hole on top and you're literally going to place that screw right into the hole. And that is what's going to hold our quilt bar in place. So you do have the option of using a right-oriented or a left-oriented quilt bar. And they just slide right through, and then you tighten the screw, and you are ready to stitch. So you could slide this as far as you want from side to side for your perfect straight rows of stitching. And again, with that, you also get the left quilt bar. And we just simply loosen up that screw, pull the bar right out, and then you're going to place the left side on, just like that, and tighten the screw. And what's really nice about these two quilt guide bars, with the last walking foot, we used the same bar, but we flipped it upside down from one side to the other. But with this particular one coming with two pieces, the feet or the guides are oriented in the same direction. So visually, it's a little bit easier to stitch, I think, with these two feet because of the way that they're oriented. In the same direction, you can easily follow a nice straight line along the inside edge of the blade on your quilting guide. So you can probably see why you might want to upgrade to that deluxe walking foot. You've got a bigger opening, you can use decorative stitches, that nice open toe sole, the bigger feet so that you've got more contact with your feed dogs, and the versatility of the two quilt guides that are oriented in the same way. It's a wonderful accessory for your sewing machine, and I think you'll find that you use it a lot. Now that we've talked about the walking foot and the deluxe walking foot, let's dig in a little bit to the digital dual feed. So I've got the digital dual feed here and you might have noticed that I switched machines. With the digital dual feed, you have to have a machine that can accept the digital dual feed and you'll know exactly what I mean by that in just a minute. But it's a little bit larger contraption here. Like I said before, we've got snap-on feet, which is really nice. This is the foot that comes with it. And the big benefit of digital dual feed here is that we have this belt. It's electronic and it's belt driven. And that belt right there, rather than walking along the top of the fabric like the walking foot does, this makes contact constant contact with your fabric for perfect feeding. And then you've got a huge sole for your foot, so there's lots of points of contact on the fabric. It's perfect with all the feed dog sets on these machines. Another nice thing about this, if you have this attached and don't want to use digital dual feed, there is a little lever on the side. You can lift that belt right up. It brings it off of the top of the fabric. You don't have to change your foot, but you can disengage the digital dual feed. So I keep mine engaged. Now to attach it to the machine, I'm gonna bring in the digital dual feed kind of from the back, put it right on the screw, just like that, and then give it a good, nice tighten. It kind of stops wiggling and wobbling when it's really in. And I talked about how some machines can accept the digital dual feed and some cannot. And this right here is what tells you if your machine can use this attachment or not. It's got to have the plug-in ports in the back of the machine where we can plug in the digital dual feed. So the moment that you plug the digital dual feed into the back of the machine, it knows and it changes the foot that you see on screen. And one of the ways that it's gonna make sure that you don't make a mistake is by graying out any stitches that don't work in combination with digital dual feed. And that would be anything that has a lot of side to side motion or forward and back because truly that digital dual feed brings your fabric from front to back. So if I go into some of my decorative stitch menus, they're completely grayed out. I can't select them. And it even tells me that that stitch is not compatible with digital dual feed. So I'm just going to select a basic straight stitch. That's what I'm on. And let's do a little stitching. So as I'm stitching along, that belt, I'll bring the needle up so you can see it, is just gliding right across the top edge of the fabric instead of coming up and down and making contact with it. It's just a constant gliding motion. It's very quiet and very smooth. So 
we'll lift the foot. And now let's try sewing in the opposite direction again. So once again, I have a nice clean intersection without any puckering or pulling of my fabrics. And because it's an electronic system, I also have the ability to make adjustments to it. So if you get to the end of your seam and you find that either your top or your bottom layer looks like it fed through faster, we can change that in the settings screen. So here on the first page of my settings screen, you can see that I have dual feed feed adjustment. And because so many fabrics today have so much texture, like a minky or a velveteen, sometimes they just don't feed smoothly together. So you have the ability to make that belt drive just a little bit faster or just a little bit slower so that you can make that adjustment and make sure that you have perfect seams every time. The other thing that the machine knows to do when you plug in that digital dual feed is to adjust the presser foot pressure. It actually drops it down from a three to a two just because it knows that that attachment is on and that's the kind of pressure that you're going to need as you stitch. So really and truly, the digital dual feed takes a lot of the guesswork out of sewing for you. You can have more precise results and the machine's going to do a lot of the work. Another great thing about digital dual feed is that it has these easy snap on, snap off feet, so you can easily change the sole. So you never have to make a decision. Do I want to use a walking foot or do I want to use a stitch in the ditch foot? You can have them both. With the digital dual feet and those snap on feet, you can utilize the benefits of a walking foot and a quarter inch piecing foot or the stitch in the ditch foot for quilters. Or if you like to do yarn couching, you've got the quilt guide bars and even an open toe foot. So I hope that you've learned a lot today and understand the differences between the walking feet and the digital dual feet. And hopefully you're ready to make a decision about what's going to benefit your sewing the most. Whether you like a standard walking foot or maybe you want the extra room of the deluxe walking foot, or perhaps it's time to upgrade your machine and get into the benefits of the digital dual feed. And for those of you that are already lucky enough to own the digital dual feed, I've got a class for you where we talk all about every single accessory and how to use them. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope to see you again soon on sewathomeclasses.com.